This is problem 42 in Klein's second edition organic chemistry textbook, and it's a classic kind of question you'll see in organic chemistry. What is the relationship between, and then there's the different molecules. We don't know if they're identical or maybe constitutional isomers. We're thinking they're stereoisomers. And so what you want to focus on is what stays the same and what um, is inverted, okay? So when you look at these, uh, two molecules here, which I incorrectly drew. Okay, let's fix that. We have uh, two wedges and then a wedge and a dash, okay? So what we have is um, this is the same, this is the same, and we're only inverting one of the many stereogenic centers. So these two will be classified as diastereomers. Okay, that's what you want to look for. Just one of the many stereogenic centers is the same, or maybe two of several, or three of several. Not everything is the same, and not everything is different. Just part of it is different. So let's look over here in this molecule. Um, this has changed from a wedge to a dash. This is inverted. This is inverted. This is inverted. Okay, so everything has been inverted and um, therefore these two are enantiomers, okay? The mirror image would be in front of the molecule, so it would be reflected from top to back. In problem C, it appears strange because we've got this methyl group pointing down at the, you know, bottom carbon, and then the methyl group appears to be moved. So I would suggest numbering this cyclohexane ring system to position the methyl groups at your lower numbering like you would for a normal naming situation. And you'll see that um, these molecules now, if you look carefully at them, they are uh, not constitutional isomers because you have a methyl group at one, two, and four for both of them, okay? So these are definitely stereoisomers. Now, are they enantiomers? Are they diastereomers? What, what do we do? So we basically, once again, analyze whether we have a wedge changing to a dash. So here's a wedge and a wedge. So that stays the same. Carbon two, we have a wedge and a wedge. So that stays the same. But carbon four is actually uh, inverting, okay? So carbon four is a dash here. Carbon four is a wedge here. So um, that is, is different, okay? But just only different at one of the stereogenic centers. So we would classify these two as uh, diastereomers, okay? This next molecule here, we have um, a wedge changing to a dash and a dash changing to a wedge, so everything inverts. We would classify these two as enantiomers. Okay, and um, next we would um, look at this molecule here, and these are identical, okay? You can see three methyl groups that are all going on a dash, and you can see three methyl groups all going on a dash, and then you can see three continuous methyl groups that are next to one another all going on a wedge, and these are on a wedge. So if you take these uh, molecules and just in the plane of the board, turn your phone or your computer upside down, they'll look identical, okay? So these are identical. You could write um, the same, or you could write identical. Okay, or you could use an equivalency sign, but that kind of looks like an alkyne, so maybe that's not the best. For F, we have, um, once again, you want to look at the stereochemistry. Uh, this wedge is changing to a dash, and this dash is changing to a wedge, so we would call these enantiomers. Now, these enantiomers are not equivalent. If you take this molecule and you try to uh, flip this upside down like a pancake or twist it around, you know, in the, and flip it upside down, it's not going to be 
um, equivalent, okay? It's not going to be equivalent. It's actually going to be the same molecule, okay? So if you tried to rotate that around that axis, you would end up with the exact same molecule, okay? It would not look like this one here. So anyways, uh, it's a kind of an optical illusion that some students kind of see sometimes. Now, this molecule, when people first look at it, kind of might get a little bit confused because the molecule is, uh, has a plane of symmetry this way. It has a plane of symmetry this way. So we would classify this as um, a chiral or not optically active. And this molecule here uh, has a plane of symmetry here. So it's also um, a chiral. But these two are definitely non-superimposable because this methyl group is coming out, whereas this one goes uh, back as a wedge. So it's different. Okay, and we know that cis and trans are diastereomers. Now over here, this is the same, okay? So if you just invert one uh, center, we call that um, a diastereomer, okay? Okay, and here you can just connect to what you've learned previously about cis or trans. So that's a brief look at some different molecules and um, how they can be classified there. And I hope this video helped you.